Namo Shayamuni Buddha. Namo Shayamuni Buddha. Namo Shayamuni Buddha. Amitofo. So today we'll continue on our Buddha story. So Buddha has gained enlightenment. He has. Huh? So we have skipped so far ahead. But that's right, Buddha was just born and then one hand to the heaven, one hand to the ground. Uh, I'm the most worthy of the all six rooms. Yeah. That's that's the beginning and the ending. <laughs> How fast the time has passed, yeah. yeah. How, how long ago was that? Months? Months ago? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Year, wow, so quick. And then we started this youth group for like, what, four, three, four years mm -hmm. as well? Right. Yeah. Early 2020, I think. Yeah, I'm yeah April. <laughs> so quick. Now we're like 20, um, 23. Yeah. And going towards the end of it, so. Yeah, what's your resolution? What's your New Year resolution? No resolution. No resolution. <laughs> Trying to get by Go every... Go with the flow. Same, same. Don't have, um, don't have like, very solid. I want this, I want that. It's... Look at COVID and all that. It just makes us realize. Yeah. I think, you know, like, <clears throat> everyone, when they're born in this world, they have their own mission, right? Like you, you might not know now, but as you go on and on, you, you kind of realize that's how I can perform. And, um, and uh, you know, like when we read the story of Buddha, the whole point is not just reading a story. The whole point is to try to, you know, figure out like from his example, what can we... Enlighten. <laughs> what can we enlighten ourselves with? <laughs> You know, what, what can we take out of this? You know, like, what, what can we actually... This happens, right? When you hear it and then you like, this is how Buddha did and then we get inspired. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if we talk about Buddha's story, uh, we learn about his um, life when he was born. Like, as you mentioned, you heard of that. And then we have the um, enlightenment of the Buddha after he did 12 years of studies. Mm -hmm. You know, he asked all the famous guru. And uh, you know all the gurus teach him all the good stuff, but he says it's not enough. You know, Fei Xiang Fei Fei Xiang Zhu Tian is just the top rooftop, Tian Hua Ban, six rims. You know, he went reached the ceilings of the six rims, built out the Tian Hua Ban. You know, he's he's very successful, but the problem is it's not solving the problem. People still die, people still go back, and when they go back, they will still have to go through all the, you know. You, the sufferings Still in the circle. <clears throat> yeah never able to get out yes. and um, mm -hmm. even though they have a long life all the way up there mm -hmm. but you know as long as there's a limit yes. that means there's time yes. and when the time's up you might not even make it to the human realm yes. there's so many cases because they spend all their bank accounts <laughs> right eight million dollars yes. that's a lot but give you 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, you're still going to spend it. And when it's ended, mm -hmm. and you didn't do anything, you know, mm -hmm. because when you're enjoying, you didn't actually practice good deeds and anything to accumulate, then it becomes a uh, negative account. You owe many uh, bad karma debt. And then that's when the suffering actually manifests itself. Mm -hmm. and, and when Buddha says suffering, it's not just, oh, I die suffering. It's... When I die, I have to come back and go through all this again. And I have to play this game again and again. It's fun to play one time, but it's not fun to play. And the other, yeah. Also the, uh, the problem with it is people have no control over it. People feel like powerless. They're still running around. Mm. They're the six rooms. They don't have control over themselves. That's right. Yeah. And they create the same condition or not, if not worse, to push and themselves down. Them yeah. <laughs> Obviously, there are chances for people to be good and improve. So these are not always like pessimistic. It's always there is a chance for you to upgrade, but also there's a risk of downgrade. It depends on how. First thing is our root, you know, mm -hmm. sanken. How strong our root is, 
That means what invokes your compassion, your you know, zhen yi gan, your um, sense of you know, restraint, sense of righteousness in a way that I can't do this, I can't continue like this. You know, these are, these are positive stuff. That's why a lot of Bodhisattva come down here and practice. This is the pain, more painful the place is, the more powerful um, the um, condition is for you to invoke your uh, compassion. Because you saw people suffer. The more power we gain. Yeah. Yeah. But the problem is if if the mindset is not right, if the will is not strong, if, if the good root is not deep, you know, there's all talking about one thing, then it's we easily get swayed by the condition. And you you heard about so many stories about people into the lab, <coughs> they are either they're rich people in this life or they're very powerful people in mm. life, but they abuse their power, abuse their wealth. And then they suffer in the next life. This is so common because when they have such a power, it's very easy to get to, to lost. Those, you get lost and yeah. them. And they straight away next life going to deep, you know, deep down the end. It's um, it's so it's, dangerous. Yeah, yeah. So even though you are in a very good life condition, it's in a way it's not necessarily a good thing. Um, so there's yeah, I just feel like in this extreme that's put your team. It's not know? um complete. It's always there's always a trap. It's always yeah, it's a pitfalls. Yes. Like what is entirely good? I mean, what seems to be good, you know, wealth, yes. power, position is not good in the sense of yes, exactly. um, your um, um, your whereabouts. Mm -hmm. You know, because you might not be able to overcome the temptation, and you get flooded with this. Yeah. And you know, there's <coughs> the world, so many temptations. Mm. A lot more than the Asian time. Even with the Asian time, people find it difficult to enlighten, get enlightened, and to settle down. In yeah. This, imagine this world. Yeah. It's more complicated. It is very complicated, and the problem is more multi-direction. Um, it's not just simply one country, one yes. people. It's becoming yes. global. Yes, yes. And then, and the kind of problem you have to face. Not that they don't have it in the past, it's just, it's commonly it's not surface. Yeah. Sometimes they just, it's so small, they, they are not like, mm. like a big thing to the society. Right now it, be, it was enlarged to the point where it's something you need to deal with along with the traditional problems, you know, the, yeah. the conflict, the struggles, and it becomes another yeah. burden in a way. And so to get through this life, and if you say you want to live by as human, peacefully and happily, that's very rare. It, it, you need to have a mindset of not um, allowing yourself to get caught up in whatever narrative this world is giving. Yeah. Because those are like watching a movie. It's touching, it's beautiful, you know, actors, actresses, they do all the expression and stuff. It's touching your heart and all that. But in the end of the day, it's a show. And we must understand that, um, you know, we, we can put out our genuine uh, wish and, you know, to our family obligation, those are important stuff. But they are always in the end, has an end. And, and if we cannot figure out a way to get ourselves, that's what Buddha said, you know, mm. to ferry over mm. to the side where we can actually find ourselves again in a way that we can truly control. Mm. Like you say, nothing we can control. I cannot stay 18 years old. Mm -hmm. I cannot stay young. I cannot stay smart. Yeah. If I can be smarter, why? Something like that. I can be, you know, if I want more wealth, why, why can't I? You know, if, you know, Bill Gates doing this business, why can't I do, get the money by doing the same business as him? Because everyone has different karma, mm -hmm. cause and effect. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the foundation of inequal world. Mm -hmm. That means our own thoughts are not in the same wavelength. Some people have cultivated, accumulated very kind and good thoughts easily. Mm. So they give rise to compassion, to loving kindness, to caring, mm. to filial piety, xiaosun, and to respect easily. Even though in face of bad situation, they can be more patient. Mm. So those people have strong good roots. Mm. And, then, and of course, some people has less uh, ability to not saying that they don't they they are they are conditioned you know that make themselves is sorry the cause is less how to say 
strong than the others. Hence, there are different levels of merits and benefits. So that is the reality on our world, Saha world. And I actually mentioned in the um, in the Taizang Gai Pei as well, because Master Ching also mentioned this is a Saha world. Saha in Fan Yu, in Sanskrit, right, means lacking. Qian Chue, Chue Xin. It's always lacking. This is how Buddha. Yes. Wow. We are so lacking in this um, world because why, why do we say that? No matter how talented you are, how you know wealthy, powerful, there's always something lacking. Yes, because the yeah. lack is not from outside, <coughs> the lack is from inside. Yes. yes, that's always you know because we have we have one of these poisons, right? Buddha categorized them. It's a lot minute nuance if you want to talk about each of these problems, but if you categorize them, it's greed. Craving, want, lust, you know, more money, you know, stuff like that. And then hatred, you know, things does not go my way. You know, irritated at work, at, at people. So this, these are the conditions we have. And, you know, ignorance. You know, sometimes we, 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 we say one thing, but we didn't execute it. We, we allowed, um, we allow ourselves to fall into you know, unwise action. You know, even though we know better, that's also ignorant. You know, not, not just because you know, but you can't even have any power over your action. You know, because that, that ignorance has been accumulated so long, you know, wandering thoughts and all that. So, so those are the really, how to say, pressing matters to us. Mm. And, um, you know, among these, we still have to continue living, you know, continue to make a living and all that. And the condition of our world is we need to have Sinung Gong San. You know, we need to have craftsmen, we need to have industries and all that to supply our needs. So, so these things is, you know, this, this is the world where we're so lacking, we build up a system to supply each other's in this insufficiency. Yet, still not enough. We have all this, still not enough. And, and the whole point of saying that is to understand, you know, do what we can Right? We are not supposed to be sitting there doing nothing. You know, even monks, they are out there and teach the world. They are not sitting there doing nothing. But problem is, when we do that, we need to always in mind, keep, keep ourselves in mind, like what Buddha has performed in his whole life. Everything is, you know, um, So, everything is dependent origination. Everything is dependent on condition to become. You, know, you depend on your parents and your own consciousness and of course your merit and fortune to become humans. That's why you have Maggie here or Dylan here. But when that condition has reached its maximum, you know, lifespan. In our case, our condition has lifespan. That means it's not permanent. It's not us. It's a condition. Then our consciousness either have to follow another karma that we have created and follow another one. So understand this means that you, you go through your life doing your job, playing your role and, you know, be real, be sincere, be, be, be truthful, you know, take care of your parents, take care of your loved ones. All these are important, you know, human qualities. We, need, we, we should continue because those are the foundation. But those are dependent origination. That means they have beginning and an end. You know, they, they, they keep transforming each other. Uh, beginning becomes the end. And then when end, what we did in this period becomes another beginning. So this is the entire hopping that never ends until we found a path. And Buddha has shown us the path. That's why he's here. Right? That's, he's not just here saying that this is the problem. Good luck. Bye-bye. Uh, if you do that, he's not the Buddha. He's just a very wise man who see the problem, but who could not find a solution. So yeah. So today's story, right? Um, using that backdrop, we understand that you know that's why Buddha wanted to go and become a monk to perform to people, you know, to, to tell people, 
you know, worldly possession, even as a prince, Fu Yu Si Hai, Gui Wei Tianzi Fu Yu Si Hai, you might have everything in your possession as a king, future king. You could not save yourself from this fate. So he performed this act of going out of household, his comfort of his family, his wife, his children, his young newborn, and to become a monk. And once he did that, he turned the Dharma wheel. He became enlightened, he turned the Dharma wheel, the first five uh, bhikshu, du wu bhikshu. And then um, first Dharma is Zhuan Fa Lun Jing, Dharma Chakra Pravatana Sutra. Basically, he started the Si San Di, you know, the Four Noble Truths, what we're talking about, the sufferings. You know, sufferings have many types. They are directly suffering, like death, age, illness, and the one that we continuously facing. Chibuta, what you want, you cannot get. IBLD, what you love, you cannot uh, hold it. It will either go away or they'll pass away. And then, Yuan Zheng Hui, people you don't like, you keep seeing them every day. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, everything hits the heart. And, um, and yeah, so, so when he did that, um, he did not just say one time everyone enlightened. First five, First five are big su. Uh, the first one is called Kao Din Ya, Chao Chen Ru. It's very famous. Uh, Chao Chen Ru is the very first uh, student that get enlightened. And you know Kao Din Ya in his past life is Liu Li Wang, the one that Lin Si Chu Si. Yeah, past life. Oh no no sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, Ah Si Si Wang is Liu Li Wang. Oh dear. Basically, he's the one that tortured the past life of Buddha. Oh. Ren Lu Xian Ren. Oh, Ren Lu Xian Ren. Is it a small wang? Yes, yes, yes. Bo Li Wang. Oh, 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 Proof. So basically what we're talking about is uh, Count Dinya is past life was a king, a tyrant king who tortured the past life of Shayamuni Buddha by you know cutting thousands of cuts in his body until he cannot function anymore uh, physically. Uh, the reason is because um, this king has an entourage of you know maids, palace maids, you know maybe the concubines uh, that follow him outside the palace and he walked by a forest where uh, you know a um, practitioner you know a dharma practitioner was meditating peacefully and serenely but this um king's entourage you know all the mates and stuff they were like you know they were in the palace all the time they haven't seen the outside world and they see someone so peaceful and so calm and compassionate so they're trying to they be curious and then they go up and sit around him and ask questions and such an innocent exchange he just give him the answer you know i'm practicing you know meditation patience compassion stuff like that and this uh mate just asking questions about life and this king because his um, internal mindset is a bit imbalanced hence he's a tyrant and he's trying to you know he has a lot of jealousy you know like, where are all the entourage you know ego you know, where's, where's all the beautiful ladies around me? All went to the um, uh, uh, how to say, the the monk. So he he was angry, and he walked in front of him and say, "Oh, you say you are practicing patience. Yeah. So let me try how patient you are when I cut you up piece by piece." So was such a violent and tyrant person, but the Buddha did not allow anger to give rise in his heart, and we understand how deep, powerful that level of. Um, not just meditation. If you only have meditation, it's not enough. He has uh, wisdom. He understands that this is not, he's not attached to his body anymore. By then, he must have gained some sort of enlightenment. Um, at that time, he said, you know, he's not attaching to his body. So he, he was being cut piece by piece. But um, he's still looking at the king and say that when I become Buddha, you're the first one that will become my student. Hence, Count Dinya. So, without uh, dragging too long, um, basically he preached, 
uh, first five bhikshu preach and then Buddha tell them, you all become ara arahant, go out, don't stay here anymore, teach the word to other people. So five becomes 50, 50 becomes 500. And then it becomes an entourage of 2,000 students, I think. At the beginning, it's only 1,000 something. And then he slowly lead to Wang Sechen, Raja Gaka. And in Raja Gaka, you know, he um, has a reunion with all his students, you know. Uh, it was a very auspicious day because in um, Theravada, this reunion was not planned. It's an unplanned reunion. Amitabha. Sorry, yeah. Hi. Okay. So uh, in Raja Gaka, um, he finished his teaching in the uh, other place and then he encountered the Kashyapa brothers, mm -hmm. Jiasa Shungdi, but that Jiasa is not Da Jiasa, mm -hmm. not the Zen one, uh, not the Nianhua Wei Xiao. So he met a lot of these talented people, students, and how Buddha works is not work, it's how his Dharma spread is. All these students already have 100 people under them, 500 people under them. So they know that this is a wise person, attain enlightenment, able to break through the, like, the cycle. And so they all follow him. The students follow the teacher who follow the Buddha. And then when you know, he reaches his you know, objective of you know, helping out the people, and then he moves on to Rajagaka, which is the famous Wang Sechen. Um, and Raja Gaha, uh, he already promised Kim Bimbisara when he was still practicing before becoming a Buddha. He was saying, when I become Buddha, I will come back. And he came back and he preached the Dharma. Of course, the king was ready. He's like, I, I really want to know. And he became the Jisu. He became the you know, lay disciple. And of course, the king will you know, build up a garden for him to give a teaching. And when the, then this king is actually has a very good, you know, a good root. When he was a prince, he was like, I have two things, to be a good king and to listen to the uh, Buddha's enlightenment. So he wants to do his job well, and then he also wants to listen to the Buddha Dharma. Mm -hmm. And so he takes refuge in Triple Gem and becomes a Gahpati, which is Jisu. Um, and he donate. Zuling Jingse, Venuvaya. Mm -hmm. And in, uh, I think in the whole Buddhist world, but as a Chinese Buddhist, I heard uh, so much word about bamboo grove Vihara mm -hmm. in Chinese uh, Buddhist society mm -hmm. because this came from here. You know, this mm -hmm. Wang Sechen the Guo Wang Juan Chu Yi Ge Jingse, you have a lot of Zu, so it's called Zuling Very logic. So, if we remember the Sanskrit word, it's called Venuvana. Okay. So this is where the Buddha and Bhiksu sit down, um, you know, gather, talk about Dharma and go out asking for food. Yeah. And Venuvana has a symbolism of first temple, first monastery of Bhiksu. Diga Fosu. Um, yeah. Okay. The three Kashyapa is quite interesting, but um, let's move on. You who begs for her direction, yeah, that one, we talk about that. So, reunion is today's topic, to be honest, um, because we want to move on the narrative. Amitabha, Sujiha. Okay, yeah, no problem, no problem. No problem, no problem. It's open, right there. Um, so, when we uh, have the um, reunion, what happened is, Buddha is in Wang Sechen, Raja Gaha. And the conference was held for all disciples on the 15th of the third month. So just uh, um, the third month according to Thailand calendar. Mm -hmm. So Thai calendar, third month, March, mm -hmm. and then full moon, Man Yue, Su mm -hmm. So in the Venuvana. So Wang Sechen in there is a called Zulin Jinshe. Zulin Jinshe every year of the year. 就是他们泰利的三月不是西利的三月的满月他们一定会聚集起来哇那个人啊我也想去 so uh, uh, I wish we can all go there man. but we go to Amitabha's land we're able to see them again so okay so why is it so good 
You know, why is it so good? Because there are 2,000. Hi, Amy. I'm with the four. No, no, please take a seat. No problem, no problem. I'm also late, don't worry. Uh, so we were talking about, uh, you know, Buddha's story. And, and uh, Maggie say that, you know, she heard, last she heard this was uh, seven steps of the Buddha when he was born. Yeah. One point to heaven, one point to the earth. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been months since then, and I just do a recap. So basically, Buddha, right, has um, performed for us, in a sense, not acting fake, but actually doing his job as Buddha. And what he did is, you know, he went through the birth, showing us how, you know, you know, uh, sage do things. And then he also went through his youth, you know, powerful, strong, handsome, rich, and then all the talents and everything, gao fu suai, you know, in Chinese. And it's basically, he's tall, good looking, he's rich, he's wealthy, he's powerful, and then he's very handsome. And of course, it's admiration of everyone. You know? And of course, the king put him as a jewel in his hand. This is my baby. You know, this will be taking care of the kingdom. And whole Indian, at least Indian subcontinent will be under his rule in future. No doubt. Problem is he doesn't want that. Because we talk about suffering. You know, life and death is something we cannot avoid. Other than this big narrative of life and death, what in between our lifetime, there is something what we call lacking. And Buddha described this world as Saha. Saha world in Chinese Suopo, which is translation from Sanskrit Saha, means lacking. So this is how he described our world as a very um, lacking uh, world. Yeah. You've got this, you lose that. There's always something missing. But if we look from dif different perspective, because I know you draw and art, imperfection actually makes the art more beautiful in a sense. If it's too perfect, it becomes plastic, very... AI. Yeah, AI. very AI, right? Yeah. It's like when you draw someone's face, you can't expect 100%. It becomes plastic. Yeah. There's always some something lacking. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no thought behind it or substance or like mm. perfectionism as well. Sometimes you just, mm. the work doesn't even come to fruition. So, That's right. Yeah. It becomes too, too, too robotic. Yeah. And why do I bring this in? Because imperfection, although it's, of course, we strive for perfection. But imperfection is part of our world. And, and you know, when you look at history, those imperfection, as in these heroes, uh, you know, in you know, three kingdoms, you know, they all pay far, you know, the, the have you heard of three kingdoms? The three yeah. kingdoms. In China, uh, yeah. I've heard of the title, but I'm not sure what it's called. Or World War Two, um, you know, all these great general and all that, they are pushing all the way to the north, trying to you know, overtake uh, the capital and then yeah, this thing is missing, that thing is missing, you know, no one's cooperating. Yeah. Or, you know, the UFA, you know, almost pushed back the Mongolian and uh, yeah. and because of the politics stuff and then he got pulled back. Yeah. That's the imperfection. Yeah. You have such a perfect character in a perfect moment, but because of lacking condition, he could not achieve his dream. He could not achieve his target. Oh. And in, in tricking them, why do I bring it up? We have Zhuge Liang. We have the uh, very famous strategians, a talent person who understand uh, where to forecast before the radar is there. You know, he knows how to calculate. <laughs> he has that acute sense. Maybe he's a meditator. He is. And why do I bring this up? Because it's so, it's part of our DNA. Yeah. When we look at our world, it's imperfect. Yeah. You know? and, and why is it imperfect? Because all this thing will arise from a twisted form of our perfect Buddha nature. If you think like that, it's not our Buddha nature is lacking. Because when Buddha enlightened, when he reaches the age of 30, sitting under that body tree, I'm not going to stand up until I reach enlightenment. Because he went through 12 years of searching. Where's the student? Where's the enlightenment? You know, he asked all the great um, wise men of that time. Uh, back then, India was the powerhouse of, you know, meditation. Not, not those modern, where you see all this hippie, no, it's not. It's a serious meditative level. They have 
they have very strong wisdom and, 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 and they produce so much knowledge and understanding of the six dreams. And Buddha reached the rooftop of the six dreams. We, we have a series where we last time talk about how many layers of existence in our world. They are all projections of our mind in a way of, you know, how our mind purified itself. The more pure and more stable it is, the more, the longer the lifespan, the better it is, because it's closer to our true nature. However, none of them are able to break through the six dreams, hence they're stuck and then they fall. So everything is finite, imperfect. And because of that, Buddha has to sit on that Bodhi tree in both Gaya right now, it's still there. And uh, he has to find a way, he's like, this is not solving the problem. I have a long life, I can practice that level, I will still fall back to the six dreams. I will still go back to the hungry ghost, uh, human. That's not enough. We need to strive for perfection. He sat down there and he did that. When he enlightened, first word he says, oh, how wonderful is our, uh, you know, true nature. Every single being have perfect, just crystal perfect, um, wisdom, um, virtue, looks, you know, the, the looks, the, 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 the deeds of wisdom. You know, appearance of virtue is good deeds and all that. They have 100% perfect virtue, perfect wisdom, perfect merits and fortunes. Because of the twisted um, reflection of their true nature, they could not attain it. It's like a moon perfectly round, but under the reflection, it was twisted. Yeah, kaleidoscopes. You know, one thing perfectly round, but because of the, you know, if you read the Huayan Jing, you know, the Avatasaka Sutra, the Flower Adornment Sutra, it's, it's, you know, layer by layer, the world is like that. You know, when we look at the modern science, quantum physics, they think of that way. But why? Because everything was bound by ignorance and the ignorance twisted alayasum, alaya consciousness, twisted our true nature. There's only one true nature. There's no two. Everyone has one. It's like a sea. There's only one sea. There's not two seas. Seas are seas. But all the bubbles coming up, you know, up and down, up and down, it's what we are doing right now. We are not separated from the seas. We are just, you know, twisted into a bubble. This bubble, that bubble. So we thought bubble is us, but the bubble will burst and we'll go back to the sea. So that's how deep Buddha has gone. And my word cannot describe the level of experience he has. For it is not something I can just talk. It's something you need to taste. Dhamma taste. You need to taste it. And to taste it, for our case, Chan Amitofo. Okay, back to the point. So, um, <coughs> uh, so I don't, I don't want to uh, go too, too long. Um, so, yeah, I'll continue where we are. So the Buddha has, um, in his um, enlightenment, went to Rajagaha. Rajagaha is Wang Shichen, and he started, before that he already had five bhiksu, who started, you know, who was being um, ordained into the monk, become Arahan, which is first level of enlightenment. He already made it. Everyone spread the teaching, and each of them brings their own student back. And when he reached to the Rajagaha, a king Bimbisara has been very joyed to see him again because he vowed when he was a prince to be a good king and listen to the Dhamma. And when he achieved these two objectives, because he met the Buddha and Buddha said, when I uh, looking for the enlightenment, looking for the way to get enlightenment, I promise you, I went past here and promise you I will come back. And he fulfilled his promise. So now, from Venuvana, we call it the bamboo growth. Uh, it's the first monastery in Buddhist history. And what he did is, he sat there and continued his propagation. What did he do? Early morning, he go out, ask for alms, begging for alms, which is begging for food on the streets. Uh, if I remember correctly, seven doors. You can only knock seven doors. And these seven doors is counted as one, if they responded. 
Yes or no? If they are not responded, it does not count. Right? That's how they do it. Seven doors. First door, knock, yes or no? Second, yes or no? They, they have to focus on their mind all the time. This is how they practice. So trying to get rid of the huan de huan shi, you know, the, the gain and loss mindset. They just went through the seven doors. As long as they respond, it's counted as one. So after the seven doors, they got whatever the material they have, the food, they went back to the monastery or whatever they gathered. And what they do is they pour in the food into the big pot. All right. Uh, I, I saw the documentary of the monk actually, like, so actually in China, but they follow 100% the Buddha's story, the Buddha's time. Uh, it was like three or six months event. Because the Chinese monk might usually we stay in temple and we have offerings from outside. But in this case, they want to, you know, revive the Buddha's um, spirit. You know, why he did that in the first place. So they do a proper uh, begging alms on the street of China. And that was very touching because all of them throw in the manto or whatever the food they have, right? Of course, vegetarian, right? In the Buddha's time, just FYI, I'm going very fine here. They don't have differentiation. You can put fish, pork in there, doesn't matter. But there was a saying that the Buddha has, you know, give out his power to manifest this as a thing. He has the ability to liberate these beings. For us, it's best to stick to vegetarian realm. So um, back to the point, what they do is they pour everything into the big pot. They mix them together, you know, and then put some spices or anything, you know, to equalize the taste and then they spread it to everyone. So there's no one person get two bowls full of alms or one bowl full of alms, the other person get small alms and then that person can eat a lot. It's equal. Everyone, no matter how much or how little you get, mix into the bowl. Mm. That's how it works. It's a perfect, uh, in modern terms, communist society. But in, in Buddha's term, that's how the Sangha maintain harmonies. You know, six harmonious deeds, Liu He Jing. The first harmonious is the wheel must be the same. Everyone followed Buddha's teaching at the time. You know, there's no Mahayana, Theravada, it's just Buddha. And then Buddha teaching Dharma. So they all listen Buddha, learning Dharma, attain enlightenment. Simple, simple times. And then um, when we have that, we have the... Um, <clears throat> we have the time, so everyone doing their day-to-day -day job. So I'm telling you they are 9 to 5, basically, as a monk. In the morning they do that, in the afternoon they are um, before 11, 12 o'clock, 11, 30. So basically when the, when the, when the um, sun is on the middle, it's a noon time, they start to, they try to finish food before, the, uh, before it reaches noon, and then they do not eat anymore for the rest of the day. So that's our eight precepts, Pak Wan Zai. Um, and then uh, the other morning, only then they can start eating breakfast and lunch. So they are begging arms twice. Uh, it's fixed every day. And what do they do in, in between, right? No, nothing, right? No, they sit down and talk about Dharma. They meditate. And when they meditate, they, any issues, Buddha is there, ask. You know, if you gain enlightenment like Arahant, you already not bound by six realms. You know, that's the only go back then. And, and not bound by six realms, right? You can help other people. You go out and tell them any issues, tell me. So you meditate next to this enlightened monk. So it's, it's a very, very, how to say, self-sustaining process. So Buddha did not have to go everywhere. He just sit here, teach five, first five become arahant, first five go out and teach their student wherever they are. They don't have to always come to Buddha. So what they do is they finish their job there. Their student, if they gain Arahant, they go out. So it becomes a pyramid scheme. No, no, no. It becomes a, a, a branching out. It's a very bad word saying it. Sorry. Pyramid scheme. No scheme. Uh, it becomes a beautiful blossoming branch. We call it body tree. Yeah. So this family, this Dharma tree grows stronger and stronger, lusher and lusher. <laughs> PR man, it's state of my mind, man, seriously. <laughs> so today's topic is called reunion. You know why I'm saying that? Because 
in Raga, Raja Gaha, if you, uh, have you heard of the, you know, the Amito Jin, the Amito Sutra? Uh, Every morning? Yeah. 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 And we always chant Yi Si Fo Zai Wang She Chen, yeah. right? Wang She Chen mm -hmm. means the kingdom, the, the city where the king gives, uh, gives it away. Wang She. The king, Wang She, give away. So this, this is Project Gaha. So he gives away to the, he tried to give away to the Buddha back then. He's like, I'm going to give you all my kingdom, half of my kingdom, if you want to come back to be a prince. Because this is how charismatic Buddha is. So back to the point, he did not, okay? <laughs> Otherwise we won't have our Buddha. Uh, thank goodness. So conference was held for all disciples on 15th of the third month in Thai calendar. So of course, right? They still have to gather once per year. Talk about how's your progress. Everyone talk to the teacher. Um, you know, like we have 3,000 uh, students here and they have questions, you know. Of course, there are other Han students that are already attained, able to teach, you know, assistant teachers. So this is a very organic, you know, propagation. It's an educational constitution, uh, institution. It's not religion. I have to emphasize again and again. Buddhism, first and foremost, it may take the form of religion, but it is not fundamentally a religion. It can be a religion because people make it into that site, emphasize too much on that. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying that is not Buddhism, essentially. What it is, I have to emphasize, is a teaching, is a is an educational system, first and foremost. It's not political. It's nothing. It's not social revolution or anything. It's just purely educational system. And this educational system is a system that based on discovery of one's most innermost potential, full potential. And full potential, those who, people who unlock their full potential, right, as a human being, first and foremost, get elevated from a point of view of a human being, is a Buddha. A complete human being in terms of the virtues, merits and fortunes, deeds and actions, San Chen Wei, you know, that everything that he did and, and say is, is compassionate, is moderate, the middle path, 100%, right? Thought is pure. This is a perfect human being. And this perfect human being we call the Buddha. So Buddhism here, everyone gathered on the 15th of the third month in Venuvana. Venuvana is a bamboo grove. It's a place where all the bamboo was growing by itself. Uh, the king, Bimbisara, give away this place for the Buddha as a base of teaching, you know, as a school. And this Venuvana is part of the Rajagaha, right? So Rajagaha is like a Sydney and then Bankstown is Venuvana, basically. Yeah. Um, what happened on that day is 2,250 Arahants. They come back from all directions, from their mission. So they all come back, settle down, report to the teacher, Buddha, what happened, when, what they see, what issues they encounter, what people they met. And remember, this is very, um, this is the only day they actually meet each other. The rest of the day, they continue their own routine in their own respective stations. So wherever they are, condition leads them, according to the condition. So, like this direction is, this is go. And if it works, they keep going. And um, Buddha gathered all disciples in this Venuvana, this bamboo grove, and instruct them, kind of like the recharge, the battery, back to your teacher, and then the teacher give him either the new stuff, not new stuff, no, upgraded stuff or refresh. I think he just refreshed them. So the basic thing he talked about is nothing more than do not do evils, practice all the goods, purify the minds from defilement. In Chinese, we heard, basically the three things. Do no evil, do all the, do all the um, wholesome deeds, and then purify your thoughts from all sorts of defilements. If we put this in our modern day context, think of the things we have to encounter. Think of the 
issues we have encountered, internal issues, right? mentally. Purify our thoughts from all deformance. It's like easy, like, I mean, it's like very clear three things you have to do. But like yeah. When you actually live life. It sounds very easy. Yeah. It's, no, it's not. <laughs> it's actually quite hard. It's like, oh, <laughs> someone in China was like, because the Hmong, of course, they all follow the Buddha's story, right? Yeah. The great monks, no matter how big they're still students of Buddha. So they were like, this is Buddhism. That's it. Nothing more. All these big talks about, you know, beautiful analysis on the Buddha's world and all that, they all founded from this. You know, if we don't, if we can't do this tree, all these big talks are just academics. Yeah. You know, all these flashy words. So everyone's like, Su Dongbo, I think that time, or Di Bai, that's a very famous Tang Dynasty a poet. It's like, what is Buddhism? And then this great monk, right? I don't know which Chinese Zen monk, is very smart. He's like, do no evil. Do all goods, purify your thoughts. That's Buddhism. And then he's like, three years old can know it. Three years old can do it. But 80 years old can't even do it. Yeah. Mm. So what did they tell us? Buddhism is something that, you know, you can conceptually, intellectually capture it very quickly. You can now think about enlightenment, you know, the uh, Buddha getting enlightenment at what level, uh, if we follow the, the analysis. Uh, we can think about uh, Guan Yin, Tai Si Ji, you know, Bodhis, uh, Di Zhang, you know, all this, uh, the 10th level, all this analyt analytical, right? We can immediately capture it. But what did they experience? How did they do it? And what did they have to encounter? And from here, as Dylan, with his day-to-day -day life in work, in family, in friends, in temple, how much did he do to reach that standard? Holy moly. That's when you know it humbles you. It really humbles you really quickly. How far, how twisted apart you are. I am, at least. And so when you think about that, of course it feels a bit heavy. It's, it's, you can't. You just can't reach it in this one lifetime. You can't. Unless you have a method. Thank you, boss. And yeah, it's a good method. You can't. You literally need to like, like you need to go out and it's, you need to cut it down slowly, one by one. You need to be a kinder person, less angry, less prone to swear, yep. and less prone to you know, distractions and all that. And then you need to start to get more and more you know, open-hearted. These are still needed to be practiced. I'm not saying that you have Amitabha Buddha's 48 vows, that means you don't have to do that. If you read his 48 vows, they're all talking about this. It's just helping you to um, give you a bit of insurance. If you actually put your effort, you can actually make it. It's just that, you know? So, so once we understand the, that this simplest thing is the hardest thing because of our, um, because of my, um, the way our thought wanders, and then we understand that um, everyone needs that refreshment, you know? And what is noteworthy of this event? Why do they celebrate it in Theravada world? You know, I think, yeah, they, they celebrate it in Thailand, you know, some part of Vietnam, because um, Vietnam is a mix of Mahayana and Theravada. Uh, Thailand is 100% Theravada, I think. And then you have Myanmar, we have Cambodia, uh, Sans uh, Sri Lanka, of course, Sri Lanka. So what do they do? Why do they memorize this day? You know, every third month, according to the Thai calendar. All attending disciples are Arahats. So 2,250, imagine. All of them, they are all enlightened. How beautiful that, that scene is. Everyone is no ego. That means they don't have that arrogance. They have no hatred. They have no um, greed. They have no ignorance. At least they can see 500 of their past life and 500 of their future life. So they all have that beautiful, like a harmony in a beautiful orchestra or in a picture. In a, in a painting of that beautiful alignment of colors and everything. That, that picture of this Dharma is exactly the same. It's that beautiful Symphony 9 or something. They're all together. And what even most beautiful about this is among these 2,250, 1,250 of them are just arrive, happen to be on the same day without even having appointment, letters. They're just there. 
They're like, oh, yeah, it's time to go back. <laughs> Conditions. So they just imagine right, 1,000 people kind of know because um, I think they're all directly under Buddha. They're like, okay, Buddhas. Yeah, they, they, they just know, right, because they're there. Like, say, Master Ching Kong, 1,000 people in Taiwan. And then suddenly, at the same time, 1,250 1, people just happen to be there. Exactly at the same day. And then it's such a such a wondrous event that no one's planned for. And then it just it just happened. So this tells us one of the best things in your life, it just happens. You know? But you need to need to be in that moment, you know, not dwell in the past. Pure, pure mind. Pure mind, that's right. <laughs> Their wavelength is just perfectly aligned. So the Buddha you know, instruction given on that day become known as Pratimoksa instruction. Nothing too um, fancy. Prati means towards. Mai Xiang. Moksa means liberation. Jie tuo. Towards liberation. Mai Xiang Jie tuo. That's it. Theravada, they always um, celebrate this. Uh, even now, if you go to Thailand and visit, if you happen to be on I don't know is March or not. March is a Jogoran calendar, Western calendar. So we need to read their, their own local calendar. Like our Chinese, Vietnamese, they have their own calendar. Yeah, I think they have their own calendar. The 15th day of the third month. Or we can call it the full moon, you know, of the third month. Yeah, in the Thai one. And the Thai, they still remember their years in the name of Buddha. It means how long ago Buddha passed. Mm -hmm. Oh no, born, sorry. Born, yeah. So their year is 2,500 something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which is about the time. Yeah. But Chinese, um, Chinese Buddhists, we calculate it as 3,000. Nothing big or breaking yeah. and emphasized. Okay. But just to be very sure, the historian in China is very strict because we already calculate since the Zhou Dynasty, Zhou Ping Wang. So pre-unification, they already calculated which year, which king the Buddha was born. So at most, Buddha was 3,000 years. At least it's 2,500. Okay, that's, that's beside the point. So that's the first reunion of his students. The second reunion is his family. I think we can uh, stop at 15 minutes past this, yeah? 12.50, and then we'll go to its food, mm -hmm. because they start at 12.30. So, um, reunions, number two. So this is a reunion time. He finishes, you know, wondrous um, gathering of all the enlightened beings. Zhu San and Jihu Yichu, just like Pure Land. You know, all the good people gather in one place. And um, reunions number two is King Sodo Hana, his father. You know, when he was a Prince Gotama. Learned of Buddha enlightenment and whereabouts. He is in Rajagaha, which is next door, very close. He sent his own, um, one of his um, you know, family member, Kalo Dainia, basically a young official in the court of the king, also a childhood friend of the Buddha, basically his friend. You know, he sent him to the Buddha. And the king wishes to see his own son, basically, you know, come back. You know. So the Buddha promised, I will visit you. Uh, the king at Kabilavatsu when the time is right, you know, after he finished his business there. So he went back to his birthplace, stay at uh, Niagor Dah Garden, basically another garden the king donates uh, outside the city. The Buddha let his disciple day to day, right? Still the same no matter where you are. Morning, wake up at four. Four. Oh, wake up at four. Yeah. See how far have I fallen? We got with four and then went out and asked for alms. Yeah. Just a side note. The Buddha, uh, at the time India, not just Buddha, India, they, they break the time into Si Shi Ma. It was incorporated in the Chinese saying four times, four periods. The way they divide 12, uh, 12 hours, 24 hours, it's into four segments. First, I don't know how to, the wording is. Uh, four segments. The first segment is the wake up, and then second segment is 
Dharma meditation, the last two segments is you know, reflect on your past, you know, what have you done today. And the last one is to sleep, something like that. So that's how they call it. Um, <coughs> it was a side news. And then what he did, he went back, continued his alms. Problem is, that time is in his own father's kingdom. So a father looking at his son, who is glorious previously, well-loved, well-respected, dignified, now become a beggar on the street, basically, from the eyes of his father, you know, using emotion, understandably. Of course, the king was surprised. He's like, it's your own kingdom. You don't need to ask for permission. You are the king. You are the landlord, basically. Everyone has their contract signed in your name, eventually. You are my son, so you can just take whatever you want. Why are you asking permission? So from a father's perspective, right? <clears throat> and then, you know, so the king was so shocked. He's like, no, no, my, my prince do not beg for food in his own kingdom. So he asked, so you can imagine, right? Like, you know, why is my son begging for food in his own car? Like begging for salary in his own company, basically. So he ride the, the chariot or whatever, the cart, asking this driver quickly rush to the scene and he used to sit there and observe his own son, the Buddha. You know, we, we should call him the Buddha, not the son anymore. He's still the son, but he's the Buddha. So the Buddha continues to, you know, ask for food and by then the king has observed everyone, of course, like flocks and to give the Buddha food. His bowl is already filled in to the max. And everyone just reverently stands the whole line, right? Waiting for the Buddha to pass through them and give the food. And so does all his disciples, thousands of them. Imagine thousands of people line up beautifully, a line. So everyone just offered, offered, offered. And yeah, they are walking towards the palace, basically back to his old place. The king was disappointed and he thought, you know, this is your country. Why couldn't you just take your own stuff? And you know, this is your own thing. And the king went to the Buddha after he finished his possession. Uh, father and son, uh, sit down and talk. Say, like, son, why are you asking for food like a beggar? Our ancestor, you know, your great grandfather was king. Your father is a king. You know, your, great, your whole generation is a line of kings for many generations. Wang Zhu Sijia. You were kings and neither of your ancestors were asking for food like that. And the Buddha replaced, his reply is very smart. This is actually done according to my ancestor. No, your ancestor is a king and they did not ask for food. The Buddha was like, you are right, father. It's true. My ancestor does not ask for food, but it's not the same ancestor I'm talking about. It's not the worldly one. So the Buddha reply continues, now I'm perpetrating, uh, I'm perpetuating, I'm continuing the tradition of all the Buddhas of the past. That's my ancestor. So his ancestor is not just the worldly one. It's his legacy of the Buddha. I am, I mean that I am now the Buddha and in begging, I do what all my ancestors have done. All past Buddha did so. And you must understand what begging for food is done for the purpose of liberating people. <coughs> it's to liberate people. I don't just beg for food because I'm hungry. <coughs> Excuse me. What all the Buddha practice, I also do the same. So this one invokes the same sentiment when the Confucius, you know, in his world, Chinese world, he says, he only describes, he did not create. He only, um, he has 100% confidence in his predecessors. So he only describes, he did not add to it. He, he follows exactly what the previous people are saying. So Buddha himself, if we understand his teaching, and by now as a Mahayanist uh, uh, practitioner, it will be deeper understanding. All the past Buddhas, you know, 
Kashyapa Jasapur is the immediate previous Buddha of Chayamuni and thousands of Buddha before him talking about exactly the same thing. So next one is Maireya Buddha who will come down and still teaching about Pure Land, still teaching about chanting the name of Amitofo. Obviously by then everyone has a very long lifespan, 84,000 years. So it's an entirely different environment. Um, but back to the point, so he's continuing the legacy of the Buddha and then once he clarified his position, right, he talked to his dear father and about the Dhamma, you know, what we're talking about, Sahawo, impermanence, kings, no matter how great they will die one day, legacy will also pass away one day. He's trying to calm his father down and the king, of course, took his father, uh, took his son, uh, Buddha's head bow and then ask him and follow him to the kingdom you know and in the palace of course the king offer the best food they can offer and the buddha began to preach everyone not just his own father everyone there you know the uncles and aunties and all the families and you know the supreme truth he has attained and the method for eliminating the sufferings everyone was able to understand rebuild the teaching with confidence and they all like you know 100% become Buddhist, in the sense they follow the Buddha. So what we're trying to get here is, even though Buddha is a monk, it does not mean that he forgot his family. It does not mean that, oh, monkhood means you don't say hi to your family. It means, just means that while you in the beginning of the journey, if you cannot have 100% confidence on your emotions, especially you get too attached, because becoming a monk is to sever the um, roots of the attachments so that you can gain enlightenment but that whole point of gaining enlightenment is not just hiding in the cave and enjoying the peace is to go back and help the people and the people who you can help the most are mostly the one who has deepest connection with you family of the buddha of course has deep connection to him your own father your own mother so when you achieve your success we need to go back we need to go back <clears throat> Of course, after his father, after his, um, of course, his, um, I think his mother, his, uh, uh, then his wife, you know, going back to his, see his wife. And <clears throat> Lady Yasuhara, for context, during the six years of absence of the Buddha, of course, she sat, right? Your own husband suddenly woke up. And then she was, um, you know, determined to know why. So she's trying to listen from, you know, the news because Buddha's, he, he just continues his life, right? And then everyone hear that he's becoming a monk, all these stories that we talk about. So she heard of it at the time and she followed his choice. So he's trying to cut down all the jewelry, makeups and all that, reduce his desires and all that, reduce his consumption, lead a very simple life, dress simply, you know, sleep in a simple place to follow his husband, example. <clears throat> During that time, there are many advances given to her, like, you know, remarried to another princess because, you know, your husband has become a Buddha, no longer in the house. So she's rejecting all that. She's determined to follow the path, the example of the Buddha. You know, out of, you know, emotionally speaking, out of thinking, care for him, of course, you know, uh, she's in love, but also sense of respect. Mm -hmm. And also, un reasonably, you know, don't know why, sadness as well. <clears throat> but she follows it. Very, uh, and she, 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 she continued to track where the Buddha is. Of course, when he comes back, she did not immediately go out. So she just tell her son, go and see your father, basically. And so Rahula went out and uh, meet the Buddha. Seven years old. He was seven years old. And of course, um, there's a description between um, their encounter, very calm, very peaceful. No crying, no hugging, and all that. It's just very, you know, dignified. And um, Buddha followed the king you know, into the um, chamber of Lady Yasuhara, his own wife, uh, when he was late monk, uh, one, one to one. So the lady was very saddened you know, of not able to hear him in person. You know, like, I wish I could hear your teaching in person. 
And the Buddha compassionately first praised what she did all these years. Right? You know, thank you so much for um, doing all this all these years. It's a very how to say calm and very harmonious. No emotion, no charge or anything. So they are very how to say very well calm. because normally in the worldly eyes will be like oh what you this yeah all that. <laughs> Well, we don't do that. Um, Buddha doesn't do that. And certainly Lady Asohara, who is his equal back then, has a way more level of control on that. Of course, emotionally, she still feels sad. But she also wants to know what he has learned all these years. Of course, Buddha will give everything he can to, to his wife, <laughs> or to his uh, lay wife. Now, Rahula later become the monk. So he first bring his son into the the monkhood. He becomes the first student monk, uh, novice monk. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So see, you see what he did, right? He helped his son, he helped, he helped his family. Yeah, so Hara will later become a monk as well, but not now. Because right now it's only male who can become a monk. And let's not use the modern mindset, let's use that time, that society. Everyone was uh, male based, right? And so only male can become monk. But later, she will also follow. But first, Shraman Nera is him. He's the first novice. Everyone else be directly become full-term monk. So he's the testing you know, monk. It has many stories between him and Buddha. You know, Buddha trying to educate him you know, how to be a monk. Being, being a kid, seven years old, quite mischievous as well, lively. And he makes a lot of pranks. And um, there's a story of Buddha... Um, heard complaints from other monks about Rahula playing pranks on other monks, giving false information. Oh, Buddha is in the front door, you should meet him. Everyone just went out and see nothing. Yeah, seven years old. Maybe he was like 10 by then. Such a, such a naughty child. And, um, and the Buddha was like, okay, okay, we need to, because uh, he's a monk now, he's not just a normal prince, right? He had, needs to have a standard. So, very wisely, he visit the place where back that was after, right? We'll, we'll go in detail, but basically the Sramanera uh, Rahula follows the great monk. Um, I think it's Dajasa is or the one of the top ten disciples, and follow him. And then the Buddha visited, check on his progress, and then he washed the feet of the Buddha. And then by then he already know the story, you know, the mischievous Rahula. And then he's like, oh, Rahula, would you drink this um, bucket of water that has been washed, you know, that the feet has dipped in before, this dirty water? No. So if you do not wish to drink the dirty water, why would you want to pour it on other people? And your deeds are not pure and not clean. You know, as a, as a monk, you need to purify it yourself. And so Rahula, you know, after two times, you know, he hear about this and he immediately fixes on conduct and becomes a very dignified student. So, you know, Buddha is very gentle, yet firm in his teaching. So education-wise, it's not just talk. You need to use any opportunity you can to give the message across. And all, to be honest, back then, they are troublemakers. We'll talk about that later. Troublemakers in Buddha Sangha. You know, there are many kinds. Devadatta, famous. Right, trying to kill him, trying to replace him. And then there's another group of Liu, Liu Xing Bichu or something, the six group, six little factions, right, trying to cause trouble. And Buddha's policy is always one thing. Do not uh, help. If you can encourage them, encourage them to correct the thoughts. Otherwise, ignore. No. Uh, Basically, cold treatment in a sense. Just don't, don't respond to them. Yeah, whopping. Mm. All right, I think I'll, I'll stop here because it's already like full time. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So thank much you. Thank you. Yeah. You're always the best. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm trying, but uh. Listen to you for hours. <laughs> <laughs> podcast, podcast. Podcast. I should do podcast. Yeah. Podcast, yeah. It forced me to. Like this is why I have to force myself to organize yeah. my thoughts. Mm -hmm. If you just tell me to read out of nowhere, 
Yeah, it will be messy. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Shall we uh, conclude this with um, let's chant ten times Shall I bring Buddha? Uh, and then ten times Amitabha and dedication of merits. Yes. <coughs> uh, English, right? Namo Shyamuni Buddha. Namo Shyamuni Buddha. Namo Shyamuni Buddha. Ami to fo. 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 May the merits and virtue adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire by their heart of understanding and compassion, then to vow to be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Namo Amitofo. Thank you so much, everyone. 大众向佛三拜问讯拜问讯起 Thank you everyone Amit of all Thank you